Many people struggle with being able to find the perfect print-on-demand niche for them. And so today I'm gonna walk you through a free AI-powered niche finding tool that will allow you to find the perfect niche for you. There are a few different schools of thought across the print-on-demand space on whether you need a niche or if you don't need a niche. And I think people are using niche very fluidly, myself included, but anytime you're designing something that is specific to a type of person, a type of product, or a type of category, you are going to be be in a niche. The only things that are not going to be niche specific are going to be things that are listed across every single different type of category. And so people will say, don't choose a niche. I disagree. You're going to want to choose something that is more specific than listing hats for dads, pet clothes and toddler clothes all within one shop because it's just you're spreading the data way too thin. With print on demand, we want to be able to find things that are working quickly and then iterate within that. And so it's really important to pick a niche, whether that be product specific, category specific, or persona specific that is more narrow than every single product out there in the space. So I think you can choose something within those three different categories and whether you want to design hats or you want to do dog mom items or you want to design within the fishing niche. All of those are different types of categories, but it's sometimes tricky to find one that makes sense. And so I always recommend choosing a niche that you genuinely enjoy. Print on demand is not an overnight success business model. And so if you choose something that you actually have maybe not a passion for, but general interest in, that is where you want to start. When I design for my niche, I am looking at different Instagram accounts. I'm following hashtags to see what's popular within that space. And so I want to make sure I'm looking at things that I actually have genuine interest in. It's all something that you are not likely going to design a product first thing and see $20,000 of sales. It happens, I'm sure, but it's going to take some time to find what works for you and what your buyers are purchasing. So having a niche more specific to what you have interest in is a very good idea. So that way you remain engaged with print on demand. It took me three months to get my first sale and that is very common with print on demand. So today I'm going to walk you through how you can kind of go at this in more of a strategic way and utilize AI to help you find that niche that fits well for yourself. Now, if you're like me, you get a little bit overwhelmed with the fact that there's AI for every Everything. There's AI for image generation. There's AI for listing and headlines, all these different types of things. I hear you. That's why today I'm going to break this down to how you can use AI for this one individual type of tactic, which is choosing the right niche or finding more niches that you might want to expand into for your print on demand business, whether that be on Etsy or that be across the web with Shopify. The tool that I most commonly use is going to be ChatGPT. ChatGPT launched in 2022. It's basically just this tool that takes a heck of a lot of information and aggregates that to be able to, in a conversational way, give you answers to your questions. And so it can be a little bit overwhelming to try to use tools like this at first, but I promise you it's very easy. It's very simple. And the way that I'm going to have you go through this process today is not overwhelming and you'll see why. So the first step to getting into this AI power niche finding tool is just going over to ChatGPT. If you've never been to ChatGPT, type it in chatgpt.com. You may be asked to set up an account. You may not. It is a free tool. There is a paid version, but I don't pay for it. Um, and so what you're going to do is you are going to type into this system a prompt. And by giving the system a prompt, it's going to hit you with additional information. Now, sometimes AI is helpful but it likely needs a lot of information to arrive at the right conclusion. And so if I were to just come into ChatGPT and ask, what is the best print on demand niches? You are going to get like a hundred different things that is like overwhelming and hard to understand and is likely not really relevant to you as a person. And so what you are going to do is you are going to type in the text that I am going to paste in the description box. That text is going to be a prompt that says, I'm trying to pick a niche for my new print on demand business. Please ask me a series of questions one at a time to help me choose the best print on demand niche to enter. Please ask these questions until you feel like you have enough information to make an educated recommendation for a profitable print on demand niche that fits me 
and has the best shot at business viability. This is something that is important because we're asking it to do a couple of things. We're asking it to ask us questions. We want it to learn off of who we are and we're asking it to tell us those questions one at a time. I've done this before and I've said, hey, ask me questions. It ends up spitting out like 50 questions all at once and it's too confusing to try to figure them out. So if you type in that script that I will paste in the description box, you'll be able to get that process going in a more digestible series of questions. So I'm going to go through a couple of the questions that it asked me. So that way you can see the things that you might want to start thinking about to go through this process. So the first one it asked was, do you have any personal interest, hobbies, or passions that you'd love to incorporate into your business? Choosing something you're passionate about can help with marketing and content creation. A lot of things that I talk about, choose something you're passionate about. I mentioned out of here, I like reading fantasy books, watching reality TV, and hanging out with my family. And then asked, would you prefer to create designs that appeal more to people who share your interests? Or are you open to exploring other niches that might be more profitable, but less personally connected? And so it's already just like on question two, understanding that there's a possibility to design for people that are interested in the same things as me, or we can go to other niches as well if you're open to them. So I said, I'm open to exploring other niches that will be profitable on Etsy. So I discerned that Etsy is kind of where I'm interested in. You'll see here that it'll say memory updated. So as you continue to come back to ChatGPT, it's going to remember these different types of prompts, which is very cool. And it'll learn off of the data that you give it. Would you prefer a niche with a broad audience or more specific passionate subcultures? I said, I think specific niches will have a better shot at early success. Would you prefer a niche that is evergreen or one that is more seasonal, but potentially high reward? And I said evergreen. This is one where if you did want to do something a bit more seasonal, that you are having months where you do 50% of your revenue throughout the year in one month, definitely choose the more seasonal option. But I think for this purpose, I wanted to choose one that would be something that I could add to as the months progress. Would you prefer a niche with strong emotional connections or one based more on trends and aesthetics? I chose strong emotional connections because to me, that is something that is more helpful with print on demand because it gives a reason for somebody to buy outside of just I like that t-shirt. Do you want a niche that allows for personalization or would you prefer selling general designs? I said personalization is okay. Would you prefer a niche with mostly apparel or one that leans towards home decor? I said, I like to start with apparel, but maybe expand into home items. Would you prefer a niche where humor and fun designs work well or one that leans more sentimental and heartfelt? I'm more of a humor and fun girl. Do you want your niche to have a strong online community or... Are you okay with a niche that might not have an obvious online community? I said online community isn't necessary, but I'm open to it. I think what the system's trying to get at here is how you would do your marketing. And so it's important to understand that if there are trends out there, there's a strong community tied to it. The system knows that and it will recommend them for you. So if you're planning to do a lot of your marketing outside of Etsy and doing a lot of your marketing within like Facebook groups and things like that, this system is gonna try to find you ones that have that community. Are you looking to appeal to a certain niche? of people and demographics. I said, I would like to appeal to a specific demographic, but I'm open to which one. Ideally, it's not as saturated as moms. There's so there's still some room to make money. From there, it asked about if you wanted to surround things like lifestyle or identity or something more hobby based. So I chose identity. And then it said, one final question. Are you looking for a, le- a niche that already has a level of demand established? Or are you open to find- finding something that has a bit more risk, potentially higher reward? And I said, I'm open to more risky. So from there, it went ahead and it spit out a ton of really, really good information about this specific type of niche. So it gave me a recommended niche of humorous apparel for a specific identity group that could be introverts, digital nomads, or specific fandoms like D&D players or fantasy book lovers. So it took the multiple niches of like fantasy book lovers and added in humorous apparel, which I think is actually spot on with something that I would have a lot of interest in. If you're on book talk or you're interested in fantasy books at all, Onyx Storm and the rise of fantasy books has taken the world by storm. And people are getting back to Barnes & Noble. They're getting back to books. And so I think this one has a lot of really good interest that would perform well for myself because I have that kind of tie to it. Um, But it gives us ideas of why they think that's a good niche. And that's strong emotional connection, evergreen demand, room for personalization, appeals to a specific demographic, and it is risky but profitable given that it's a little bit newer and there's not as much established demand. Within that, I wanted to understand, do you have a list of identity groups that aren't too saturated? And so in addition to doing 
humorous apparel for that specific identity group, which could be things like fantasy book lovers and things like that. I wanted to see if they had a list of any other groups that might be able to adapt these designs for. So it spit out a handful of really cool ones that I had not previously thought about. So digital nomads being a big one, this is continuing to be something that people are looking for where they do not want to work the nine to five. So I think that this one trends really well. Introverts is another one. Anything where you could incorporate humor and being an introvert, I think has total potential. We talked about the book lovers and fantasy, fitness enthusiasts, but specific niche. So they go a little bit deeper to say that we're not just looking for overall fitness lovers. We're looking for CrossFit fanatics or gym introverts. And how could you make that funny? Cat lovers as well. Plant parents, urban gardeners, creative entrepreneurs, solopreneurs. So these are all things that, yes, it's saying these are the different interest groups, but it's giving you potential design themes for each one that are related to that like humor and funny type of niche within this. And those thought starters continued for a handful of additional types of niches that they gave me all of these types of trending interest groups. I wanted to ask if there were any emerging niches that were newer. And so once again, it does its thing and it spits out more nuanced interest groups that are not as saturated because they're a little bit newer. So it gave us ideas like eco-friendly, sustainability advocates, digital well-being, screen detox enthusiasts. This is one that I absolutely loved and I would have never thought of on my own. But once I saw it, I genuinely thought that this is going to be a huge trend in the next couple of years. And the potential design themes of humor around tech addiction, self-care quotes about taking breaks, unplugging from technology. There are so many companies popping up right now that basically try to help parents become less reliant on screen time. People trying to take these challenges where they are going phoneless for a couple of days. And so we're going to see more of this. And I think if you could add humor into it and speak to these kind of enthusiasts, that is going to be a upward trend as well. Non-mainstream fitness trends as well. So valuable here. The fact that they talk about cold showers, biohacking quotes, wellness experiments, we're seeing so many different types of wellness trends like mouth tape come about that you can make really funny quoted t-shirts or mugs about things like needing to be home by nine so you can mouth tape and watch TV. Like different types of things like that that can kind of spur your creativity along with these niches. And it just continued to give me a ton of really, really cool, more nuanced niche things and ideas of design themes that you can play with the humorous niche installed into them. And these are just more specific than dog mom or religious teas that I think give me a lot more meat to kind of consider which designs I would want to watch. So hopefully this type of process is helpful for you and having the prompt come at you one question at a time is more digestible. If this is helpful for you, please drop some of the ideas that it gave you in the comments below and I will catch you on the next one. one.